Hello, hello everyone and welcome to this week's nutrition video. This is about nudging our kids towards better eating. Okay, this is more of the older kids and really talking them about food. So let's get right down to this video. <music> too much or they have more of one thing and not enough of another thing eating is complicated right it's filled with culture connection comfort calories but in this video we're gonna be breaking it down in bite-sized pieces so you have a place to start okay so let me ask you a question all right when you ask your child about food where do you start okay most people say food you start at food so what I want you to do is sit down with your child and ask them how they eat, okay? Some of your ch children might say um, that they don't wake up too hungry, so they have just nibble on breakfast, a little bit of breakfast. And they might say that they only eat uh, a few things from their lunch uh, that they pack, like the things that they like, right? And then others might say that dinner is just crazy and not consistent, okay? Especially if you have multiple kids. You could have multiple activities and you're driving from one activity to the other activity, but dinner is supposed to be in between so you eat in the car, right? That happens to so many of us, especially with multiple kids and activities um, going on in their lives. It, it gets crazy with working kids, right? So when you look at this, you can kind of see that their eating is a little bit all over the place, right? With our busy schedule, sometimes eating becomes at the bottom of our priority list, right? So instead of thinking of our diets, it, you need to start thinking about how you eat. And something that we can start with is called normalized eating, which is eating a, a breakfast, a well-balanced breakfast, a well-balanced lunch, a well-balanced dinner, and like two or three snacks in between, right? Now you're going to ask me, well, how do I do this in a busy schedule? We are going to make a plan that is simple and that it can be repetitive. So for example, um, breakfast doesn't have to be huge. It can just be something with protein and fiber to kind of help them get through the day, okay? So some examples of that could be yogurt and fruit. It could be just whole wheat toast with a nut butter on it. But um, here's something that you can do if your child's having a hard time with switching it to like the yogurt and fruit or the, the whole wheat and toast. You can meet them in the middle, okay? So for example, if you're trying to get them to eat porridge because it's, it's better for them and they're just not having it, you can maybe meet them in the middle and put some honey in it or some maple syrup in it, just a little bit, just to get them that sweetness to maybe try and eat the food, right? Just to try it. It's all about taking a step in the right direction. It's not about changing the entire thing, okay? And um, so for example, we're gonna talk about something called choice architecture. And this is about rethinking your automatic responses, okay? So your child has an automatic response to many different things, right? So for example, if you hand them a bag of chips, they're gonna sit there and eat probably the whole bag of chips, right? But if you give them a bowl, if you just start giving them a bowl with like say a quarter bag of chips, they're gonna sit there and still eat the bowl, but they're gonna have less chips, but they're still gonna feel great. And that little um, hint of like fillness and joy of eating the chips that you, you get from eating chips. Like you sat there and ate a whole bag of chips, right? Like we've all done it. We all know the joy that comes from a bag of chips, especially when you're sitting there watching TV. <laughs> And just mindlessly eat right they do the exact same thing so you can just start putting chips in a bowl and it's a different it's a different choice right another example is if there is let's say 
you have a jar of cookies on the counter, right? Or there's a, a bag of cookies on the counter or a bag of cookies in a cupboard where they always go to the fine food. They are more likely to grab a cookie because it's very easy for them to get out, right? So if you start putting cookies in an area where they don't really go much or um, in a cupboard where they don't really see it, like it's off the, the counter, um, they're not going to think about that cookie and they're going to start thinking about maybe the apple slices you just have on the counter especially if they're grazers like my girls are grazers so if i just leave food on the counter they're like oh can i have that or if i start eating a snack that's like veggies and dip they're just like oh can i have that because they're like oh i'm hungry right and they see me doing it okay another thing is monkey see monkey do if once you start changing this and using the ch the choice architecture for yourself it's gonna start going off of the kids as well okay so just changing that choice ar architecture can really help your ch child choose better options and have a better relationship with food they are making that choice right the kids like to feel in control they like to feel like they're it's they're, like they've controlled something in their life and food is a, is one of the main things that they try and control, right? So having these little things is just kind of like, it's you just kind of like basically changing their options by allowing them to have many options. So that makes sense. It's a perfect example when I have the colored plates for my younger kids. We're talking about older kids now, but when my kids are younger, so they're five, you know, there's just young children, right? And we have colored plates, so we play a game where if you have a yellow plate, you can have any fruit and vegetable that's yellow. Or um, we can have a rainbow day, so you have to pick one fruit or vegetable of every color of the rainbow, right? And you can have that on your plate. You can just have one piece of broccoli or one slice of apple. It just has to be that color. And they're loving that, right? They have a choice. So um, giving them many choices is great as well but also just kind of like nudging them with this choice arch 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 architecture can help them as well, especially when they're older because they have their own minds made up already, right? So what I've also noticed with my kids and with my clients is getting the kids in the kitchen helps getting them to kind of nudge in the right direction of eating healthy, right? So getting your kids in there to help make dinner or help make their lunches for school has really helped. So let's just give an example saying you're making dinner and you're chopping vegetables okay your child may be helping chop vegetables depending on the age of course um and you could just say hey why don't you chop up one extra carrot and then you can put it in a dish for your lunch tomorrow your child is more likely to eat those carrots when they have chopped it rather than you have chopped it and put it in and it's like a crazy thing that happens but it's because it's their choice they chose to cut it and they chose to put it into their lunch does that make sense so they could eat it so doing little things like that getting them into the kitchen even if they're making like um with our cookies we kind of put protein in them so they're kind of a little protein infused we put um flax seeds in them so they have a lot more fiber and we just kind of make our, our cookies and baked goods a lot healthier we don't put sugar in them and I'm getting my kids in there and making that stuff they're like wanting to eat that stuff because they've made it right so they can put one of those cookies in um the 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 lunch and they will eat that as well and what i love about making homemade cookies you can you can you know make the size of them i only make cookies like like this big okay like this big um and my kids don't are just used to that size right so as you make cookies you can slowly reduce the sizes of them too and that's another choice architecture you're slowly changing you're not just going all out and taking all the bad food out of the house right that's not gonna happen now research has also shown that um, how you eat as a parent helps the child right so what I recommend even with busy schedules busy schedules are busy but I recommend trying to eat sit down as a family at least three times a week um, to sit down and just really connect okay because food's all about connection so you talk about about your day and relieve your stress and you're eating a nice meal that your children may have helped make, right? And just having that family time together really helps. And them seeing you eat healthy and it kind of, it makes them want to eat healthy. They want to eat just like you. And it's just 
your habits kind of start becoming their habits. Just like your, the way you talk, right? The way you talk, your kids start talking like you and like, oh no, right? <laughs> Sometimes you're like, oh no, I shouldn't have said that because now they're saying it. Especially when you have a five-year-old, they like to repeat stuff, <laughs> right? It's the same with eating. They see what you want to do and they want to repeat it. So trying to schedule in um, at least three, just three meals. Um, you don't have to go in and do all, all every single day, but it really, really helps with the child. Now, what I want to show you now is just some resources that you can use to help make this plan because what you want to do is sit down and ask your child um, how they eat. And then you want to make a plan that suits your family. I can give you all the the ways that we do it our way, like how we do it, but it ain't going to fit your family and your busy schedule. So the best thing to do is sit down how they eat. You figure out, you talk to them about them. You figure out how they eat, how much breakfast they eat, how much lunch they eat. Um, is dinner crazy? Is it on the go? Are you eating it in the car? Um, do you have to make dinner the night before? Pack it up like you do for lunch so you can take it in the car with you you need to start making all these kind of like plans and little things and you need to sit down with your kids to see what they want to change first because you do it in baby steps and see what they can help with you with change so the first resource that I have for you guys today is actually it's a meal planner and it's an entire year planner that I have created that I give my clients to help okay and in here you break down what you want to eat every day for a week okay right here and then you have your grocery list so you sit down and we i tell my clients to sit down as a family to figure out what you want to eat and there's like a little notes page on the on the on here as well so then you can also like write down what meals you want the ingredients of it and everything especially like fridays for us every single friday for us is pizza because i'm too tired by that <laughs> cook so we have pizza and we switch it up we make homemade dough if we're gonna do that we make the homemade dough the Sunday before and we put it in the fridge or freezer um, we we order pizza okay we sometimes just get a frozen pizza it's all or like a store-bought crust instead of me making the crust from scratch right it's we switch it up we switch up the toppings we still make it interesting so it's not always the same thing um normally wednesdays are our big family lasagna days and we have we we grow all our own food and we make lasagnas when they all comes off and so to, most of the time we just grab a lasagna that i've already pre-made months before in the freezer and just pull it out on wednesday you need to figure out what works for your family for dinner. Because if you're not going to be sitting down for a dinner, you're not going to make lasagna, right? You're not going to have that, right? You're going to make a lunch for you. So this is a perfect resource for you to start with, to kind of start making a plan. And, it's, and that book is the entire year. And you can get that book in the link below. Another thing that you can do is I also have a workbook that you can sit down and ask your kids questions about this so you can start with how you eat how do you want to eat um what foods are your favorite what can you change what can't you change what are you good at what aren't you good at um in the food wise like are you good at chopping vegetables no okay let's you can't do that okay are you good at having chocolate chips on top especially if they're younger and they're like yeah i'm really good with that and that's something they can do right uh, it's breaking it down what they can and cannot do um in their diet and lifestyle right and i have that book and well, I have that workbook on my app and you can get a little preview right here. So here's my app. You can actually click on the app. The app is downloadable on the app store, the Apple store and the Google store. And just, it opens up, you scroll down. And what I want you to look at here, because all my courses are here, but what I want you to look at is the kids health center that I have on here. So you click on that and there's tons of different resources and worksheets for your kids to kind of build on their healthy habits and their mindset. But what I want you to look at right now is the kids health goal setting book. And we're going to load that up. Once it comes up, it go, it looks exactly like this. And then we're going to hit the link, the Canva link there. And it brings you right to the, the goal setting book. Okay. So this is where I want you to ask how your child eats. Okay. And they will go over kind of like how they eat. Um, when they eat, the times they eat, um, what they eat. And then we're just going to kind of like plan this book, make a plan with this book. Okay. 
So you're gonna, this book is all about how I can improve my physical and emotional health. And there's all these things that they can do. So there's ideas listed up above there and they can list some ideas below. And then there's questions that they can go over, like what are they good at, what are they not good at, what's hard for them. Then this is the time to brainstorm. They can brainstorm all these ideas of how they want to reach their goal. And this is where they set their goal. So they can get um, right down to nitty gritty of what they really want. Is it they want to have a little bit more energy to play um, soccer? Do they want to be able to focus in school a little bit better? It's whatever their goal is. This is where you, you kind of break it down for them. And then you make an action plan with them within this book for them. So this book is really, really awesome and helpful for their kids. And it's available on my app if you guys want to download my app and grab it. I hope you liked what you saw in that workbook. Now you can grab that in the link below. And um, that's our video for today. So both those resources are in the link below. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I will be happy to ask them. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys next, um, next week and next video. Bye guys.